Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, April 23rd meeting of the Conway Select Board at 6.30 p.m. It will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and the Finance Committee. The meeting is being recorded on FCAT and on Zoom for the town website. Um, if for any reason those recordings cease to function, the meeting will still proceed live and in person. Call the meeting to order. First item, vote to approve the minutes of April 16th. Very well written yet again, yeah. especially with all the motions. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to approve meeting minutes. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. There's four warrants. There's an accounts payable warrants in the amount of $141,562.22. A payroll warrant in the amount of $139,024.31. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $34,798.27. And something's called W24-SAF-03 in the amount of $937. That amount, that last one for 937 is actually the school activity fund, and it has receipts for the expenditures for school activities. Um, lots of arts and crafts and purchases from the Springfield Museum. So, um, no mystery. And that actually, the warrants were stunningly boring this week. Just all payroll and taxes and school stuff. Insurances. Yeah. Um, so I'll move to approve the four warrants. Second. Set forth. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Chris? Uh, emergency meeting yesterday. Yeah. The burial. Um, <laughs> And okay. then, of course, the uh, executive sessions we had, and I also spoke with Darius today concerning the voiceover IP. Um, ah, do tell. Need replaced. Do tell. Not much to tell. He's going to just tell his IT director to contact me and give me the synopsis of why it's needed. Um, so we have are more educated as to um, the expenditure. Good. Good. Yeah, um, um, all of those, except for the one with Darius, plus um, a bunch more. We had um, multiple discussions with town council in a variety of areas. Uh, the Festival of the Hills was one of them. As a, also, a conference call with town council, Garnique, with the, uh, I guess he's the, Kenneth, the head of the, Department of Revenue legal staff um, to try to get Festival of the Hills uh, as part of the town committee in a above board legal manner. Um, and uh, there was a bunch of others too that blessedly escaped my memory. Um, so um, in public com uh, comment, because it didn't make it wasn't in time for the uh, agenda. Um, we can engage in a discussion from the select board point of view because it is the, the topic, this is for Jessica Corn, she's here from Sunderland, um, to speak about the warrant article for uh, people under people under the age of 18 to vote, 16 to 18 mm -hmm. um, to vote in town, town meeting and town election. And I know when we saw it in the warrant, or proposed for the warrant, we didn't really know the backstory of it. So um, she's graciously come up to Conway uh, to, uh, to talk about that warrant article. And um, Jessica. Yeah, thanks. I'm sorry I was late in reaching out about it. It's okay. Yeah, so I've been working with the Frontier students who collected the signatures in Conway for this. Um, it, uh, we are doing the same petition for Sunderland, Conway, Deerfield, and Waitley's is still in the works. The first three are certified. Waitley has a later meeting and deadline, so that's um, still in progress right now. Uh, so we're trying to lower the town voting age to 16, uh, which is only for town elections, town meetings. Um, if this passes as a town meeting article, it does not immediately lower the voting age. Uh, what it does is it would ask the select boards to send a letter to our state representatives and ask, uh, asking 
them to file a home rule petition that the state legislature would need to approve before we could actually let the teenagers vote. Um, there are several other municipalities that have done this in recent years and the state legislature has um, not taken any action. So those towns are really excited that we're trying to do this as sort of a block here in Union 38. Um, I think Northampton passed theirs in 2019, so they've been waiting at least that long. Um, Boston, Cambridge, Brookline, Lowell, Southborough have all passed it. I think Lexington is voting on it this week. Um, so those towns are hopeful that, you know, with this extra sort of block of towns, it would increase some pressure on the state legislature to act on theirs as well. So, um, I don't know where you all might like to take this conversation. I don't know if you want to hear what got me involved in this or... I'm happy to answer any questions. I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I think this is great. I have no questions. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I, I looked it up, up, up online and uh, got the backstory on it, so I'm, I'm satisfied. Not that I have a vote here. <laughs> I mean, if there is some backstory you want to talk about, you know, this is watched by a president. And, yeah. And I, well, sure. So um, I was inspired when I attended the Massachusetts Association of School Committees um, annual conference, and they reminded us that they had passed a resolution in favor of lowering the voting age to 16. So this is um, coming from the state level. Um, I was really interested when I heard that. I am a parent and a teacher and a school committee member. Um, in all of those roles, I'm really focused on who I hope kids will be by the time they're independent grown-ups. Um, and I care way more that they're meaningfully engaged in their communities than I care how they perform on the MCAS on one day. Um, so meaningfully engaged in their communities would include voting. Um, you know, right now we don't let people vote until they turn 18. So most kids turn 18 their senior year of high school and like the big election is in November when most of them haven't had their birthdays yet. So if we can lower the voting age to 16 then we can um, get most of the sophomores because more birthdays have passed and the juniors and the seniors we can teach them about local politics and what the local offices do and what happens at annual town meeting. We can get them in the habit of voting. It's going to be exciting because it's the first time. We've got data from other places that have done this, that 16 and 17 year olds vote at higher rates than older age groups because it's exciting. And they, they talk to their friends and they bring their parents. So it could really help to increase our total voter participation. Um, I don't know how the numbers look here in Conway. I, I hold the Sunderland School Committee chair seat um, on the authority of 101 people who checked a, a, a box by my name in 2022. That's less than 4% of Sunderland's voters, registered voters. We could do better. <laughs> we actually have an article coming out in our Conway Currents where I got 10 years worth of voting records from our town clerk. Mm -hmm. That's going to be on the cover to show people what our percentages are <laughs> just to say, come on, let's get out and vote. But my understanding is of the four towns in Frontier County historically has had the highest percentage of total of voters at its town meetings. That's right. Um, but we still, you worry about, you worry about the number of people that always used to go that have, you know, it, it skews older, the crowd skews older, mm -hmm. and um, we lose, like, like most of the towns of Frontier, we have more deaths every year than we have births. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, I think, I, I, I thought that this, anything that can get more people at town meeting is by definition a good thing. And, um, and I've also thought, you know, one of, it's, this is one, the fact that we have a town meeting for form of government is one of the real secret sauces mm -hmm. of the town. And um, I think teenagers, they don't. They might not appreciate, especially as they go off to school or training in former Confederate states and think the warmth is great, et cetera, et cetera. And then they they, they realize that um, maybe after they're there a little bit, that they have no say in their local government. That it's massive county or you know a quarter of a state for one local government, and you have zero ability to influence those decisions. Whereas here, you have by standing up and attempting to persuade your neighbors and friends, you have the ability to change what your, how your tax dollars are spent. I think it's a beautiful thing. So um, I'm all in favor of it, too. Yeah. Not to mention a lot of our past elections have come down to a handful of votes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a few teenagers can swing. <laughs> they could. Yeah. They could swing it. Yeah. <laughs>
I think it's a great idea. Anything to, like you said, to get some engagement across the board um, with all ages, age brackets, but it's a good civic course as well that actually hands on yeah. instead of just looking in a book, like get out there and make a difference. It's great. And, yeah. and people say, you know, oh, it's town meeting, it's just mostly budget stuff. But the budget is the purest expression of a con of a town's priorities. So, um, so anyone else? No, thank you all for your support it's, awards. It's, thank it's you. on the warrant, yeah. and I think I'll certainly speak in favor of it. So. Great, thank you. Thank you I, I do have uh, actually. Uh, would I talk to the town moderator about having somebody who worked on this who was under eighteen speak? I believe the moderator can make an exception for yeah, um, somebody who's the, not a registered. In Conway, the way that that normally works is um, one of us, we, we while we're sitting there before it starts, we assemble a list of the people, the non-residents or the non-voters that we wish to be able to, which always includes Darius and the mm -hmm. principal, et cetera. And um, if you just let us know what that person's name I is. I could get you a name. Okay, great, perfect. Make sure that that gets on the list. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. business will just go down the list vote to appoint Michael Coachella as the town accountant he is the gentleman who is the current town accountant but in a different capacity um, so this is voting for him for a three-year term commencing July 1st 2024 in accord with Massachusetts general law chapter 41 section 55 Personally, I'm very pleased with this gentleman's yeah. services for the town. I think this is an easy one. Yep. I'll make a motion to vote uh, Mike Pacelia as the town account for three years term. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I vote to close the warrant. We'll, 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 we'll hold that off to last. Um, discussion vote to sign the letter of support for Conway's Fiscal Year 25 MVP application. Veronique. Um, I actually put the copy I have in here, so. <laughs> you guys uh, Well, I don't have to read the whole thing, but basically this is just um, the uh, letter of support from the Conway Select Board saying, yes, we very much would like to have this MVP grant award in the next year. It is about the Pine Hill neighborhood. Um, so I'll read the first part of it. It's letter of participation in support of Conway's FY25 MVP action grant application for the Pine Hill Stormwater Improvement Project. Um, so it says Conway's project will include nature-based stormwater installations on public property, a rain garden at the town offices, and roadway drainage improvements and education and community outreach to encourage installation of appropriate nature-based stormwater practices on private property. We are especially excited about the stormwater manual specific to Hilltown geology and geography that will be mailed to all Conway residents and the neighborhood ambassador program which will conduct educational and outreach activities and distribute materials to homeowner about improving drainage on private property. Um, so that's just an excerpt from the letter, but basically it's just the Conway Select Board saying yes, we very much support this application going in that is being put together for us through the FERCOG and GZA. And we will be applying, we're meeting tomorrow to finalize it and we will be applying on Friday, which is the deadline. Anybody have any questions? Not here. Uh, so I'll move to I'll move to sign the letter of support for Conway's fiscal year twenty five MVP application. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. I am signing it and passing it down.
Next, the discussion and vote to sign a letter of support for the Resilient Deerfield River Watershed Partnership MVP project through the FERCOT. Same thing. <laughs> Did you want me to read the letter? Well, <laughs> okay. Um, the Town of Conway is pleased to support and participate in a project that will convene a resilient Deerfield watershed um, partnership. Conway and Ashfield share the South River watershed, and in 2018 we worked together to complete the MVP planning process. Our joint MVP resi resiliency plan was one of the first regional plans completed under the state's new climate resiliency program. Since becoming a designated MVP community, Conway has been actively engaged in identifying and implementing, implementing flood resiliency projects in the South River watershed to protect our own town center, road infrastructure, homes, and farmland in our community. Um, so we understand that the members of the Resilient DRW will work collaborat collaboratively to identify, prioritize, and seek funding for local and watershed scale projects that increase, increase the flood resiliency of our region's towns and the watershed they share. So basically this MVP grant, which the FERCOG is spearheading, is kind of more of a regional, let's look at the you know, bird's eye view. Um, so it's kind of exciting how many MVP grants are going on around here, because you just signed a letter of support for the one in Ashfield. Um, so yes, so. Uh, um, that's pretty much it. Just it's just saying that Conway supports this grant application as well. What happens when the state increases the MVP budget? And the nice thing for Conway is we're one of those that has a no match. Yeah. So I'll move to I'll move to approve the, the, the signing of the letter of support for the resilient Deerfield River Watershed Partnership MVP project through FERC. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. We're signing it. Okay. Thank you. Discussion and vote on establishing the Conway On Demand Senior Transportation Service. So, um, this is really a vote on supporting the establishment <laughs> of Conway On Demand because. Um, so, so as as you probably know, this is something that I've been trying to get for years. Um, just because, uh, you know, the, the the way I came to the select board after four or five years as the chair of the historical society, and then years in the school committee, and um, you just get to know so many of the older folks, especially some some of the really amazing older folks, um, and and over the years you see them as they, before they go into nursing homes, and you hear over, over and over again, you know, I can't stay in Conway anymore because I can't drive. And, um, and, and you know, the, there are services existing, Frank, uh, FERTA, Franklin Regional Transportation Authority, does have a med ride program that seniors can participate in. Um, there's also Mass, Mass Health has some transportation services that people can, but there are a, a whole host of problems, not problems, but limitations with those programs. Number one, they can only go to medical appointments or, um, or uh, you know, uh, big Y on Thursdays. Um, and the medical appointments are only for the appointments, they're not for treatment. Um, it, it's just, and you have to have 72 or 48 hours advance notice, et cetera. So, um, was fortunate enough to uh, have a meeting with Tina Cote, the administrator of the Franklin Regional Transportation Authority, which is FERTA, um, and got, uh, you know, and, and to hear her say that they still have a little bit leftover money, grant money, for this year. And their, their fiscal year is January 1 to December 31st. And they, uh, um, and I talked about what I wanted to do, and she, she said, let's try it as a pilot program. So that's what this is. It's a pilot program to gauge the interest in this town. And, um, and it's a Conway Senior Transportation On Demand Service. And we have enough drive, volunteer drivers. Uh, it's conceivable that we could provide services with like one hour notice. And FERTA is, administering it they have the staff all ready to, so 
people that want to ride would call for it to for it to would go through the list of drivers and see who's available or willing to do it and um, and they broadened the scope of where people can go to within the state of Massachusetts and the re so m my whole thing was that it's not it's not enough just for doctors appointments or grocery stores in order to really live without a car you have to be able to go clothes shopping you have to be able to get household goods you have to just be able to have a life um, so that's and, and so that's what we're that's what this program is and um, as far as I know there's nothing else like it um, and we drivers will get paid 67 cents per mile plus tolls plus parking um, they have to have an insured vehicle they have to pass a quarry background check they have to do fingerprinting um, they have to sign a piece of paper saying they will not physically assault the, the drive riders no matter what um, <laughs> And they have to have their car inspected by FERTA to make sure there are no hidden sharp objects, um, et cetera. And um, we have, I have put together a driver and rider packet um, with Adam's very capable assistance. Uh, riders have to be in the FERTA system, which is a one page form. One page double sided form, okay. um, but um, the drivers have like six forms, several of which are double sided. But um, as soon as there are riders in the system and drivers in the system, it's ready to start. So they, the assumption is that they would be Conway drivers, right? They're not going to use Yes, this, this is Conway state. drivers for Conway residents. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, what Furta has said to me is that the uh, you know, e everywhere from Greenfield to Shelburne is so lacking in drivers that they're hopeful that some of the Conway drivers might volunteer to drive outside of town. But this is really about Conway, for me at least. Um, and, um, but if they want to, you know, they, they can drive wherever. And seniors can request the di driver of their choice and they'll get called first. Um, but. Riders have to pay 40 cents per mile to travel. Um, but they can have friends or companions at no extra charge to come with. So, um, and they get billed by FERTA at the end of the month. So this- So they can go on a date with the driver or something? <laughs> I didn't think of that, but I imagine so. I, I thought, um, you know, because, because Boston for medical appointments or Boston for whatever, a Red Sox game or something like that is, it is, you know. So the drivers only get compensated per mile, not hourly? Not that is correct. <coughs> uh, initially, it was going to be hourly, but that would set the program so much different than all the other towns just have volunteers <coughs> uh, uh, with, with no hourly anything. So this is, mm -hmm. they wanted to keep us a lot like the other towns. The difference is that the scope of the services that they can provide and where they can go and for what reasons. So. Is there like a minimum number of the the thinking was three is really the three three is what I think she said three is what like Greenfield is down to right now um, but they you know so three obviously would, but if we have a lot more more than that then it's much more likely that when someone calls for a ride like right away they'll be able to get one and that's to me, that's part of it too. Yeah, if you have to live your life scheduling it seventy-two hours in advance, that's a big, that's a big downside. So, um, so, so we have driver and rider packets. They are available at town offices at the select board's office, um, and they're available at Council of Aging at all of their events. Um, I believe I hope we're going to put it on the town website soon. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Um, but um, as a, along with the explanation that I wrote about what the service is, and um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully people will use it. The, the, the what Ferda's intent is that if this is a service that is used, that is useful in this town they would like to buy a handicapped accessible van because 
people's vehicles are not by definition handicapped accessible, and that's one of the that's one of the demographics of the population that we'd like to be able to serve. But if this is used, Ferda will buy a handicap accessible van for for Conway and pay a driver. Do, do, are they going to? Do you think they can track um, locations where people are going outside of obviously residences, but um, businesses? Because it would be interesting to see if there was, you know, one or a couple businesses that were heavy hitters for the ride share. Yeah, well, the, I, I I I think they do collect that data, and I know in the rider in the driver packet there is a, a log. And they have a, a form for a log of where they're, where they've come from, where they're going to, etc. So that would, I, I believe they collect that data, but I don't know what they do with it. Because that could determine if a larger vehicle might be needed for, say, they're going to Big Y all the time, castaways all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, um, uh, the the. Um, that you know what what uh, you know the, the 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 one feedback that I got was the feeling that forty cents a mile for a rider just still seems like a lot, but when you compare it to the cost of owning a vehicle, it's not very much, um, and the fact you can have guests and whatever as well. So, um, yeah. big Y is twelve miles away. That's a eight dollar round trip. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, you know, Ferta currently does not go to the, all the Hadley stores, so you can, which, are, which is a big deal. Yeah. So. Um, but this, this service would. This would go anywhere in Massachusetts yeah. that the driver is willing to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the driver has to say yes. The driver is just asked yeah. by Ferta, yeah. and they can say no at any time. And that's one of the one of the selling points to drivers is you you don't have to say yes when they call. You can uh, so. But the more drivers there are, the more likely it is that somebody would say yes. So that's that's the program in a nutshell. Um, and because it didn't cost any money at all, and there was no agreement that needed to be signed, um, she just said, "Here's all the forms. This sounds great." We talked a bunch of times. Um, Veronique was in on a couple of calls. <coughs> we exchanged a lot of emails, and she said, "You're good to go. Let's get everybody started." And, Let's get it started. So, um, you know, but I, I, I wanted to select board to vote to support the thing because, A, it's an amazing program, I think, and it serves a need that has been existing for, since they stopped going around in horses and buggies. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah, we know the Council of Aging approves of it. Council of Aging really likes yeah. this program. Yeah. Um, and the fact it doesn't cost town government a penny. Right. And um, but Council of Aging is all behind it. They're 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 sh spreading the word themselves. Yeah. So the vote is just up to establish the actual to support the establishment of it um, and okay. make it an official select board approved program um, rather than just something that I've done. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll make a motion to support and vote on the establishment of. A Conway On Demand Senior Transportation Service. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it's unanimous, and thank you, everybody. I think, I think this is a really good thing. So, um, and if you can, I have some packets. If you know of anybody that might be interested in volunteering to be a driver, if you're over the age of 60, you can be a rider. Um, but uh, if you're not, spread the word about, the packets are over here, um, spread the word about being a driver. That's really what we need, the more of them. It's a good way to, vol good way to volunteer in your town. Um, last, last in new business, um, trying to, the discussion and the update on the Festival of the Hills becoming a town committee, uh, which is, which, since it's on the warrant anyway, it's good for the good for the finance committee to hear this too. So, um, when we had talked about this last a few months ago, the 
you know, it, this was something that I wanted to do since like 2018 when they stopped being a town committee. And they stopped being a town committee because the Department of Revenue basically made us stop them being a town committee because they weren't, it was not, they were managing their own money, they, they, separate and aside from the town, they were, you know, all kinds of things, not all kinds of things, but that's basically it. Um, and, um, and at the time, they didn't want to be a town committee, they didn't want to deal with the open meeting law, um, etc. And they went off and became a 501c3 nonprofit. And most people in town don't know that. Um, they still think that they're a town committee because they've been a town committee all along up until 2018. Um, but the um, and, and so we talked about this a few months ago, and um, we decided we were going to put this on the warrant like a few months ago. And between town council and um, the accountant, uh, we came up with a uh, basically that they would. Festival of the Hills would become a town scholarship committee. There's a statute that allows for scholarship committees. And we were gonna set up a revolving fund so that they could, monies that they bring in for the festival would go into the revolving fund and just like they do now, they would pay for the current year's bills, enough money to pay for next year's festival and then the leftover would be scholarship monies, which is what they've always done. Um, when it actually be, got written up and submitted to the Department of Revenue for approval. <coughs> Department of Revenue said you cannot use revolving funds for this purpose. The use of revolving funds is very limited by statute and you can't do it. And we talked a bunch of other ideas. Um, it, actually, it was a really neat process meeting the whole finance team, um, meet a bunch of different meetings that we were in together, um, kicking around different ideas gift, you know, two different gift uh, um, accounts, one incoming, one outgoing, but there was just problem after problem, and um, and we got a hold of um, the, the, um, the Department of Revenue Legal Counsel, mm -hmm. um, who was the one had, who had really flagged the use of the revolving fund. And, you know, we kept on pitching the different ideas that we had, and he kept saying no, and finally it was like, this, you know, this is what we want to do, help us. And, um, and so, what he, his idea, um, and it's, is to ask for a special act of the legislature. And he helped us with the language that is now in this warrant for the first time. Um, if you look, it is all the way in the back. Um, town council was very involved as well, but this, the language in this warrant is sort of a joint work product of the whole finance team, town council, um, and the Department of Revenue legal council, um, who once he heard about this program, really wanted to support it. It reminded him of his hometown, Watertown, fair in the square thing, whatever. So, and he want, really wanted to support this. So, um, this is Article 31 now. It's the new language that you're seeing for the first time tonight. And what, what, what's Water, Watertown do with the fair in the square? I have no idea. I, I don't know. It's Watertown. It's it's by caviar for the whole town. I don't know. Um, but Can you say something about having um, the buckets for the donations? Yes. Isn't that part of that? Yeah. 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 But he just talked about how much he loves it. Um, just so you know, town council did recommend we switch our 30 and 31, so 30 and 1 the first. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so, the, so the idea is, you know, one, the idea is once town meeting, if town meeting votes, to ask the legislature to um, to enact this bit of legislation, then by next year's Festival of the Hills, assuming they can get this done within the six to nine months time frame that we have every reason to expect they can, um, 
the next year's Festival of the Hills, they could be a town committee. If the, if the enacting bylaw that is, all, it all, is also on the warrant for the first time today, um, which is now Article 30, but we're going to switch them around. The bylaws should come after the special legislation. Oh, okay. but, um, but 30 and 31 is going to be the blueprint for the future of the Festival of the Hills, hopefully. And, um, you know, again, it's not asking the town for any money, although if we are setting up a revolving fund per the legislation, we probably want to have a line item for it, and $1 or something like that, but I don't even know if we need to do that. Um, but the, um, and, and the Festival of the Hills, number one, the, the current committee voted unanimously to become a town committee, and um, they have seen, as of today, they have seen the bylaw language and the statute language. They're all in favor of both. And um, they have yeah. to take the conflict of interest training. Right they have to do everything, and they know that. They know that. Um, but it's um, there, there's there's real benefits to the Festival of the Hills as an organization, as an event. Um, right now, them having to purchase their own liability insurance, it, the cost for that goes up a lot every year. They would be, if it's a town event, they would be covered under the town policy, which um, would cost a lot less than it, than it does for them as a nonprofit. Also, the rather than having to p pay police and emergency services detail charges as a nonprofit, they would you know, it would only be the normal salary yeah. rate, whatever. So that, just those two things will save them mm -hmm. a lot of money. And that's what, and also, uh, you know, although not asking for any money in this, and hopefully not, you know, not, not ever, but if they do, you know, God forbid, get four or five years of rain and bad attendance, this, the, the town would have the ability to throw them a lifeline if the town so chooses, yeah. but um, but we're, you know because right now they're just off on their own and we cannot give money to a private nonprofit so as a town so but again we're not asking for money this isn't about they have the money for next year's festival and it you know it, it, and and it's they've had a, a run of making enough money every year to pay for next year plus scholarships so and hopefully they can continue that it's. Mm -hmm. It's well run. They have a new crop of volunteers um, on the board, and this bylaw, the, the bylaw, the select board would appoint um, the scholar, the new festival, the Hill Scholarship Committee members, and they, at the end of everything, they would also award scholarships for continuing education or training purposes. So. This is the plan, this is the long-term plan for this year coming up, 2024 Festival Hills. There's still going to be a 501c3 nonprofit. Mm -hmm. but, um, so the town has stopped paying for the Santa Cans? Yeah, um, I don't think the town... Well, there was actually, a, there was years was on the line. Yeah. For a number of years they didn't, then, then they did when the septic, the town this town hall septic system couldn't handle it. Well, I mean, I know there's one out there all the time anyway. Yeah. There's two out there all the time. Right? Used to be like 800 bucks. Yeah. Anyways. I, I don't know. I don't know that, that, I don't know that that's happened in a while. Um, but, but, you know, to me, this is a long-term solution. And, um, and I think the current volunteers would appreciate feeling like they have a backstop, mm -hmm. and this—that's what this would be. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is the one thing. This is our one civic tradition. This is it. This is what we're down to, um, and uh, um, I think it's universally appreciated every year. I think most people come to it in town. I do. I always have. Most people volunteer. This is another thing that needs. They need 200 volunteers a year to put the thing on. Um, and they have a mm -hmm. fundraiser coming up. But the, the untag, untag the untag yeah. sale, which is next weekend, weekend April? No, it's in May. It's in May, yeah. Yeah, later, uh, mid-May. Yeah. I think it's May 18th, and it's I May think 18th. it's the same day as we're having our MVP 
final, but so people can go it to It is May 18th okay. because rain day is May 19th, which is my birthday. Yeah. So I read that. <laughs> Um, so that's that's the plan. Um, so um, I mean, when, when it comes when it comes to going through the warrant again, we'll be voting on those articles as a select board, I guess. But um, but spread the word. I think this is another thing that's a good thing. So I think it is. I hope I know I know one person that didn't that doesn't think it's a good idea. Why do we have to do it? Have anything to do with that? Nothing but crowds. Nothing but, nothing but people parking in the field. But I always liked it. So they park in my field. What are you talking about? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. So, um, so that's it for new business. You want to call your meeting order? Yes. I make a motion to call the Conway Town Finance Committee meeting order. Second. Thank you. All in favor? No. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Roy. And I make a motion to approve the Conway Finance Committee minutes of April 16th as presented. Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. So we have the articles 2, 3, 4, 7, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16, 25, and 26 to vote uh, on tonight. Unless they've been reordered. Yeah, I noticed on here that seven doesn't show close, but we did vote on that. Do we have, is there a different order for the, uh, from last week's draft of the, of the No, you didn't vote on seven. We didn't vote, we didn't vote, vote on seven. The mini splits? The rebate for the mini splits? No, well, that's six. You didn't vote on seven because that included Article 4, which you hadn't voted right. on. Yeah. Oh, it got, it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it? Before we get into all the other articles, do you have any objection to doing the planning board bylaw since the esteemed chair of the planning board, George Forsier, is here um, to discuss that? Is that right? Article 29. Article 29. Do you have a copy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Submitted by the planning board. Um, it amends section two of the bylaw for the planning board or for boards, town officers, boards, and committees. And it states only Conway residents shall be allowed to serve as voting members of boards, committees, and commissions. Um, and it adds a new remainder of a sentence. And that's, however, appointed associate members of town boards will be allowed to serve whether town residents or not. So that is... Oh, you know what? My apologies. That should say serve and vote. Oh. I thought it was not vote. I no, thought... serve and vote. Right, right, George, that's what it... Well, that would be the, the hope that that yeah. person could vote. Okay. Call them out. What's the definition of an associate member? Um... Everybody, everybody on the planning board, the state law, state enabling legislation defines associate member as, as a member who, like an alternate juror, mm -hmm. uh, can sit on the board but can only vote and take part in a special permits. Okay. Do they have to be a town resident? At present, because of the general bylaws. Okay. This article amends that. Mm -hmm. Amends that. Right now, it could be anybody. It could be an associate. Member has been appointed. Right now, the associate members have to be appointed by the select by the select board. Okay. Uh, and but they can't be an out of towner. Well, that's now. But so and they still have to be appointed by a select board, but they can be an out of town. Right. Right. And the specific trigger for this, if you didn't know, is that um, currently a member of the planning board, Joe Stugowski, is an associate member 
He's been on the planning board since it was invented. Um, and in recent years, he stepped off as a full-time permanent member of the mm -hmm. Cleveland Associate, which means he can help us with special permits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe has just moved to Wakely. Mm -hmm. But yet he's got 40 years of institutional knowledge. Right, and right. And mm -hmm. he's a tremendous asset. But he can no longer right. help us. And if we get a special permit request in the coming year, for example, mm -hmm. he would not be able to sit in and partake. Um, and the other background piece of this is that, like a lot of boards, the planning board is chronically understaffed, mm -hmm. hard to find volunteers. Mm -hmm. We've been running on four out of five mm -hmm. for the past two years, mm -hmm. and will for the, for the foreseeable future. Until unless someone were to step up and, and join the board, special permits require four votes in the affirmative to pass. So if you've got only four board, right. four people on the board, and you need four votes to, for a special permit, it's not. We don't think fair to the applicants to have that high bar, right? Yeah. All four of the people who are going to have to right. agree. Right. So that's the idea from the state enabling legislation behind the associate members. Mm -hmm. So you can have the full five people regardless of what the circumstances might be. Um, so with Joe's leaving, it occurred to us that this was maybe something that mm -hmm. ought to be fixed. State law allows out of town people to be uh, appointed to boards. But because Conway passed this particular bylaw in 2016, he's been barred from being able to do that. So this would modify that ban for this very sort of narrow exception. Yeah. But this would apply to all boards, commissions, not just the planning board? Well, the planning board has a statutory definition for associate members. My understanding, generally, for boards that have other boards that have associate members, those are members in excess of the numbers of members that the committee is allowed to have. So they have boards, they have associate members that are, that are they call them, that are non-voting. Right. Um, so this isn't, um, this wouldn't allow any associate member to vote, it would only be, would only apply to associate members of the planning board. Well, this, is, this is the any, any, yeah. 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 any town board. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that, that's, that's the only, concern that I have is that would this allow unlimited expansion of town boards yeah. to include an unlimited numbers of non-residents? Well, the, um, they have to be appointed by the select board. Still, yeah, I don't think that's enough of a check. And that's my concern is the vote part of it, especially for a planning board, right? I'm a huge fan of Joe. I think Joe should obviously still have the right to be on the board, but let's say any developer from any town could get on the board and vote their way to change bylaws such as the common driveway and uh, develop community, you know? In the planning board's case, okay. I can't speak to other boards. Right now, I don't know many other boards that have associate members, but um, in the planning board case, the associate member by state law can only vote on special permit applications. Okay, so for example, if someone wants to build a solar farm right. in Conway, for example, um, that requires a special permit. An associate member could take part in that process, but they couldn't take part in a generic change in the zoning bylaws. That's for full-time members only. Aren't you concerned that somebody with special interest towards one of those I, well, I guess I placed my faith in both the members of the planning board and the selectmen mm -hmm. to know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I would hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, yeah. Per, this associate position has to go through conflict of interest training. So, you know, oh, yeah. I think like if they're a, a sure. representing a developer and developers are applying It's, it's a municipal yeah. employee, just like that. All the rest of the required to Yeah. yeah. There'd be conflict of interest rules. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just wonder if we want to have something that limits this just to the planning board. It's a general bylaw. I don't think we can do that. Um, but board. what we could do, I mean. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. 
you guys would have to appoint the cell phone. <laughs> so we're gonna have, <coughs> Conway gets a big sign up for volunteer drivers for the program you're talking about. <laughs> and go drive around other towns. And other towns can come and volunteer for our committees. <laughs> How many boards could have associate members? Well, that's the question I have. I, which boards does this apply to? I, mm. I thought that, um, the Board of Health could? It depends. The Board of Health did. Could. The Board of Health used to. And it depends on the, the, the Planning Board has a statutory right. associate. Mm -hmm. There are other associate um, members, but I don't have the top of my head exactly, you know, those parameters mm -hmm. of which committees or boards can have. The other associate, uh, meeting boards with the uh, associate status for these associates be non-voting only? With some, they are, yeah. But um, again, it's so different from committee to committee yeah. and according to the statute that I would, I mean, town council reviewed this, but um, I, I would like to get maybe a list of which ones it would apply to. Yeah, okay. So is there a limitation on how many associates could be on one board? Yeah. Or do you know? <laughs> I don't know the, broad, the answer to the broad question. I, I, I suspect a lot of the town boards, the membership is controlled by local bylaw uh, and, and custom. In the case of the planning board, it's governed by state law. Mm -hmm. And state law says that you can have, we, with a five member board, can have one associate member. Okay. And if you have a seven member board, I think you can have two. Okay. But in our case, it's just the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So revert to Massachusetts general law. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, if you care to look it up. Right. It's section, chapter 41, section 109. Well, I'm sorry, no, no, that's the provision that allows us, that's the provision in state law that allows out of town people to be appointed to boards or be members of boards generally, unless there's a prohibition local Provision, I'm shot, sorry. Yeah. What was the number? It's chapter 41, section 109. Basically says, unless otherwise provided by general or special by law, a person need not, in order to accept appointment to a public office in a town or district, be a resident of such town or district. So state law basically says this is okay, generally, unless you forbid it locally, which we have. And by the way, I'm sure our planning board members would be fine if you wanted to narrow this. We just weren't sure we wanted to come and ask for special provisions just for us. But if you wanted to narrow this concern about <coughs> out-of-towners being on the Board of Health or something, um, I, we're fine with that. We're just trying to, because we are in this sort of unique position with respect to a state um, law that allows for associate members. And actually, almost calls for one. Could we just change it to say appointed associate members of the planning board will be has, allowed to serve? Has Donna board? been consulted about that specific question? No. So I've got three questions that I'm going to ask her. <laughs> because I mean that 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 seems to be a good yeah. a good um, safeguard. Yeah. So I want to know which boards is this applied to? How many associates can a committee have? And can this specify just the planning board? Those are my three I, questions. For yeah. The, the last one, especially the last one, would really mm -hmm. solve everybody's this. concerns yeah. and accommodate the so that the planning board's request. And I happen to think it's a noble request. I known Joe for a long time, and he is um, he he would be sorely missed if he's unable to participate for real. So, um, yeah, um, so that, you know, that, if, let, yeah, that we can, we can get that answer probably tomorrow because I know Don is around all week. Um, well, you can't vote on it until the next meeting anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, and, um, but I do know I do know about previous conversations where she has concerns about general bylaws being made specific to one thing. So we'll see. Maybe it could.
go into a different bylaw if that's if this general bylaw is the wrong one. Well, there is one in our bylaws about the planning board, so there is no place to, you know, like there is with the finance committee or others. Yeah, maybe that would be the way out then, make our own planning board bylaw. So, but I think it's a, it's a noble idea, and let's see what we can do to make it happen in a way that safeguards everybody's concerns and accommodates the planning board's wishes. Which I support. So. Does that sound like a plan? It sounds like a good plan. All right. All right. You're ready? Thank you, George. Well, thank you all. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'll let you get back to your number function. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. All right. Back to where we left off. Before I so rudely interrupt you. Which represents a five percent increase that we had discussed last week. Did this did you guys finish up your discussions about pay rates and salaries and contracts and I think the reflect? number, I believe. Okay. Oh. No, the paper you have in front of you, this one, simply reflects, excuse me, reflects the 5% total, but does not include the salary increases, which I have before the board tonight, which are outlined that they need to vote on. Okay. So that I can add them to our two. And there is one, just so you're aware, the snow and ice. Um, I will need to get those numbers from Ron, separated out. set the salaries of elected officials? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's just, on? that's the boilerplate one that we yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I did speak we with... We didn't vote on that last time. Okay. No. No, but there aren't any elected officials that had paid salary requests. So, and that's just, again, a boilerplate saying that you can set the salaries. Mm -hmm. That has to be in every year. I did check, and uh, um, yeah. anyway, so. So we can vote in Article 3, then, since we can't mm -hmm. Article 2 just like. Sure. So I read the Article 3, and then I can have a select finance, select for the finance meeting. Okay. If, if what's keeping you from, if it's what's keeping us tonight from voting on Article 2 is the raises, I'm willing to, it is the salary, Request. I'm willing to do that now. If that would that be a you still won't be able to vote on Article Two because okay. we don't have the numbers. But you should yeah. still vote on salaries <laughs> <laughs> so that I can put the in for right. the ones that you can anyway. Go ahead. All right. You make a motion. <laughs> All right, so I'll read it. To see if the town will vote to set the salaries of elected officials as provided by MGL Chapter 41, Section 108, to be effective July 1st, 2025, as presented in the budget, or take any action relative thereto. I make a motion. Anyone take a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Your motion was Aye. to your motion was to approve that. Yeah, to approve that. Yeah. Yes. Harry's said you make a motion. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'll make a motion and then ask for a second. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, so, same motion to approve Article 3 for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. All right. So, Article 4. 
Do you have any discussion with you to do some research? Yes, I talked to Darius today. He's going to have his IT um, manager give me the full breakdown. But it basically comes down to they're currently not able to, to call 911 from the classrooms. Oh. Um, now, this happened yeah. to my company two or three years back, and it was all firmware. So, depending on what handset that they have, a voice over IP, if you can't update it because there's no firmware to update, then it's a useless piece of, you know, oh, yeah. it's junk. When we yeah. talked about that earlier, that specific fact is one that we wanted to keep from yeah. public disclosure. Oh, I agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, it makes right. sense to keep that. Thing. Yeah, I did not know that. That's why, that's why, yeah, so, yeah. but, um, um, yeah. But that, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. But uh, well, that's what I figured it was because that's the only reason. You can you call nine one one from your cell phone? Yes, you can. Um, just no, not. That's a whole no, that's something else we yeah, don't really yeah, want to talk about. Not. But um, there, there, there. If you ever try to use your cell phone at the grammar school, I don't have one. There you go. Yeah. That's why I didn't buy them. Wi-Fi. That's why a phone system at the grammar school is so important and why the classrooms need to have it because yes. there is no cell phone reception there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and even if it's nearby, the nature of the roof that we have at the grammar school is such that it scatters cell phone signals. And they are very old handsets, so Darius told me enough to to feel comfortable on it. I'm going to get more information yeah. for um, if the public has any questions. Yeah. I'll have yeah. every bit of detail to why it's needed. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. So does that mean you want to vote it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. So, Article 4. You see, if the town will vote to transfer $16,000 Conway Grammar School Stabilization Fund for a new phone system for the Conway Grammar School or take any action relative there too. Second. I, I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roy? Aye. All right, carries 5 0. Thank you. Same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Right, next up is Article 7. Since we now have the missing piece of the puzzle. Right. Article 7. You see, if the town will vote to transfer from free cash $53,700 to the Conway Grammar School Capital Stabilization Fund or take any action relative there too, I make a motion to approve it. Turn a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries 5 0. Article 7. No. Um, so oh, same, oh, motion, yeah. same, same, motion, motion. same motion for select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next up for the Article 9, the compact loader. You got the information, Chris, you were looking at or something? Yeah, so for the compact loader and the plow truck, um, we don't have specific currency numbers because when you go to bid on these, you have to have the funds available. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a little bit of extra cushion in there. Uh, otherwise, um, whatever town, if town does vote for this, and we go and it's, you know, we only have the article at 92,000, which we were expecting at 92, and it's 93, then right it's a moot point, yeah. right? So. That's why the figures are the, the way they are, because it's enough to account for the need, uh, plus a little cushion. Thank you. So, any, any further discussion for anyone? Vote to vote? All right. Article 9, see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash, $100,000 for the purchase of a side entry slash exit Rubber tire compact loader or take any action relative there too. I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Thank you. All, all uh, five votes. 
same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so we'll go to vote. Any further discussion for Article 10? No? Yeah. All right. I'm wondering why um, we're getting a pickup truck for a plow truck. So whether we get snow anymore or not, I'm just curious. <laughs> why, why would the plow truck need to have four doors? Well, it, it would be a, a replacement of the current vehicle. Not a replacement, but it would be a replacement as the main vehicle, and the current vehicle would be used as a passenger vehicle. So it's basically a like for like. The current plow truck is a four door, you know, large, what is it, 3,500? Yeah. Yeah. 20 years old? It's very old. <laughs> um, it's an eight cylinder though, right? Yeah, I have one here, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's a 2004 model. It's, I know that People thought it was a 14 and it was a 4, I believe. Let me just verify that real quick. And you know, uh, you know, Ron had donated his truck. That truck is no longer in service. <laughs> so he's donated his minivan. I'm sure you've seen it go around. It's a maroon minivan that's been going up and down the streets. It's pretty sad. All right, so the pickup truck. The current pickup truck is a 2004 Dodge Ram 3500. <laughs> and the intent is to use that as a backup vehicle. The so we don't have to use his van. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Any further discussion, questions, comments? Nope. Okay. Thank you. So, I'll uh, go ahead and talk again. For Article 10, to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash $100,000 for the purchase of a plow truck, a one-time four-door short bed, six-cylinder diesel with a new V-plow, or take any action altered there too. Oh. I make a motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. I'm just blocking now. I just heard the word diesel. Yeah. From Blocker. So that means you're uh, negative? Or? Yeah, I say negative. All right, so it turns no forward. diesel. Talk to it. Is that 4-1? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two nervous. Thank you. So Article 11. All right. The burn. Um, Article 11. I'm sorry. I should have adjusted that. Yes. It needs to go up to 85. 85. 85. Right. Um, yeah. Not only does it need to go up to 85, but as I stated last, the grant that we were hoping to apply for does not exist currently. Um, we don't know if it's coming back um, next year or not. But at least for the foreseeable future. There is no grant. Yeah. Not for Conway, at least. Yeah. So after speaking with um, State the Don, Chief Bates, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he feels that, you know, I basically told him the same thing about the, the how, what the highway department's doing. Um, you have to go in knowing that you have enough money to make a bid. Right or to purchase, so I asked if 80 was enough for not only the vehicle but the upfitting as well, and he thought it might go over, so um, decided to increase it to 85. What's the order of time? Any idea for these uh, upfitting changes? Well, the upfitting would uh, is not the issue; it's getting the actual cruiser itself. Oh yeah. There's only two places in Massachusetts yeah. you can purchase them from. And they ain't around here. Correct. Is there a really long wait time, like the fire truck? Yes. Um, now, a lot of towns have tried to do hybrid vehicles, which have been kind of a disaster. Um, and those have more of a lead time, but we're not looking at a hybrid. Can in this town anyway. So, you're not taking a hybrid up 
hills. Well, if you can't use the cell phones, I don't really want to try to look like <laughs> <laughs> So we don't think the lead time will be over a year, but it probably would be yeah. at least six to eight months. Yeah. Okay. And the cruiser that we have now? So we are one of the very few towns, if not the only town that only has one cruiser. Um, we would want to use the cruiser because we have uh, what um, we have Chief Don Bates. We have at least do we have three now, three part time. Soon to be four. Soon, yeah, soon to be four well, part time officers. Well, soon if, yeah, if 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 but we're also if the job search is successful. Yeah, but we're also losing one, so yeah. I think it's still three. So it'll be three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we need two cars for three? Um, I recall the issue was when the, the cruiser was in for repairs, there were 20 some odd calls that they couldn't go. Yeah, Kenny had the cruiser in for repairs, and I think it was actually more than that. Mm -hmm. I wow. think it was triple that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that'd be the other issue is there's absolutely no redundancy whatsoever for yeah. our police station. Well, the last one went to the uh, fire chief. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so the fire department has more vehicles than the police department. And this would also, <laughs> this would also <laughs> allow for stationing one vehicle in the public safety building, in the police bay of the public safety building where a lot of speeding occurs. <laughs> um, yeah, as, um, as, as yeah. well as, um, yeah, or, or, or otherwise throughout town, but right. um, but that generally, you know, you want you want your police chief to be able to, I mean, he, he lives close to the town limits, um, mm -hmm. and you want him, especially if he is on call or, you know, the designated officer, Relief, whatever evening relief officer or whatever, however, whatever the phrase you want to use, um, so that he has, so that he doesn't have to drive into, in those instances, so he doesn't. The, the, the chief, you don't want the chief to have to like drive into, the station to get the vehicle when it's an emergency. So no, um, no, you wouldn't want that. But, it was more surprising. But I can we remember waiting the fire car. Have no chief. I know. I know. We have a waiting fire car on, on uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, no, yeah. It's very surprising. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's. So that being said, this article should say eighty-five. Eighty-five. Okay. 85. 85. Read it to us. With 85. 85. 85. So. Yeah. I mean, they're they're. The should we make a motion to increase eighty-five and hold on eighty-five? Yeah. yeah. We have to do right. Uh, or can we just do it as? No, you, you can know, assume that that that's. An error <laughs> <Okay>. or an update because <laughs> it wasn't voted. We caught it ahead of time. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Now you might need three votes. Re reverse the 80 and then the three votes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I make a motion. Excuse me. I, I'll read article out. The city of the town will to transfer $85,000 from capital stabilization or otherwise provide for a police cruiser and includes upfitting or take any action relative there too. I make a motion to approve. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Five all. Okay. Same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we're up to Article 15, this, the town t telephone calls. Could be town telephone calls. No, I'm ready to <laughs> I think we're, we're going to do some further research about Potential savings and how some towns have done this and what what annual how they might be able to save in the annual census. I think that was why we had tabled the vote last year. Well, week. plus the specific language of yeah, the, the, language. the, the, the language. rather than the corporate speak. Right. With, with, oh, well, highly, they, well, highly vetted. Highly vetted. No yeah, longer doing extreme vetting and, here. And as, as well as what the other the other part to, to specify what the purpose was, mm -hmm. the goals of saving money and reducing our carbon footprint. Yeah. The sustainability committee met. Um, they or at least several of them did. Um, no, they, 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 they was they, at a meeting. Yeah, where they, they did. They were brought. They, they, they were it. they were brought our concerns. They were they, they our concerns were brought to them, and they agreed with them, and they uh, they agreed with the changes that are made. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So we can get away with corporate without well, too much corporate speak. Too much. Too all much. Right. So I'll, I'll read Article 15 out, the new version. 
You see, if the town vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide $9,950 for a preliminary study of town street lights by an energy consultant with the goal of saving money and reducing our carbon footprint, or take any action to there to make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five up. And same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Article 16. Involving funds. I don't, why did you care with us last week? We didn't. We voted. We ended up voting. Oh, we did? Because did. 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 over here it says that. Oh, it says you're on the 24. Okay. So the next article we're up to is Article 25. Right? About the, uh, that's weird. Oh, no, Article 25, we made a motion. 24th. Yeah, 24th. Did somebody get renumbered or moved? Oh, that's another one of the boilerplate ones. Yeah, they have been changed. Well, only the ones, let me see. Yeah, well, they have been changed because we've had to add some in. Most have been at the end. Okay. For some reason, I don't have a record of our vote on our yeah. I have, it, I have it numbered as Article 17 yeah. from last week. Right. Is, is that a mistake on my part? I'd have to look at, I don't have in front of and me. Article 18 my hand was notes, the opioid settlement. Yes. Oh, you know what? It and Article 19 was the Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Was so you you re renumbered the article. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I didn't write 16 down last week. Yeah, last week it's number 17. I know we voted. Yeah. 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 It, they have so been voted. Yes, they have. I think we voted on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Apologies. It is a moving target. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we did approve Article 16. Well, nice. That was the old six. You approved a article 16. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, well at least we the language is the same, we right? So, <laughs> the article number is different, but the language is the same. So, we see. okay. Yeah. So, the article 16. So, we're, we're, so we, we approved. Article, we, approve article, the current article we approved article, article 16, but last week it was called article 17. 17. Yeah, so yeah. 17 was. was a, and 17 was was approved. Approved. Why you skip was approved 16. as Article 18. I, think it was 18 I don't think you skipped it. I just don't have my Because I went through the whole uh, 19 thing. 19 was OK. Yeah. We approved that. Yeah. Uh, that's not Article 18 this week. Yeah. Right, but you see, now I meant to do that in the minutes and write down what the actual article was about so that I could, that's because it did get renumbered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was 20. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do it real quick, all this is is the spending limits. It's not going to hurt if you revote it in case you know. Well, no, because oh. because it, it, it just we're just looking at what we did vote because yeah. we have a record of things that we, the articles we didn't vote last right. week, but they're by number, they're not yeah. by right? You can see, I have the actual warrant with all my writing on it, so I went through and that was the ones. Oh. So I apologize. <coughs> <coughs> writing down which each one Erica, was. I have last week's warrant. So what's the, the next one that we didn't vote? Uh, uh, 25, I had it as, what, which one is, I don't have the language, what was Article 25 last 20, week? Uh, 20, last week was, that was the, the boilerplate to see if the town will vote to allow the select board to apply for acceptance. That's just basically letting us that's, apply for grants. That's 24 now though. That was, yeah, that was okay. So there is... So last week's warrant, Article 16, if we didn't vote on it, it says add in transfer station revenues with a note. Oh, that's why. Yeah, because that got moved down because that has to be in the bylaw. So now that's at the end. Oh, okay. This well, is part of the moving target. So okay. that's why you didn't vote 16. Okay. All right. So the 16 that's in there now must have been 17. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Yeah. yeah, so you voted it. Job, Erica. Mystery solved. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah. Thanks for being organized. The, uh, I should have brought my own. Okay, so. Article, we didn't vote on it. The old 25 and 26, so what were they? Uh, no, the other 25 and 26. Uh, okay, last week 25 was Everything, yeah. So, um, is it this the community preservation fund? Yeah. So, this, this week's 25 was last week's 27. Yeah, I mean, we voted the land takings right. yeah. last yeah. week. Yeah. We yeah. Yeah. Um, Even though it's not in, in the board you have, I did record all the votes. <laughs> And then I changed them around. So if it has your votes, it should be. But 25 and 26 don't, and I thought we did vote. Oh, we did vote those. Yeah, we did vote those. Yeah. Yeah. We did vote those. Yeah. 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 I don't know how that went back. Oh, yes. oh good yes. Lord. Um, that doesn't make any sense. To me. So I guess you just look here and see whatever we didn't vote on. Yeah. I mean, that would be the case. Yeah. But except for 24, we did. I know yeah. you did 25 and 26. Yes. Yeah, but did we vote 20? You do have no vote on 24. I feel like we did because that, this is what the boilerplate yeah, was. Yeah, it's just a yeah. 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 must have voted on 24. We're going to 24. Let's see. Okay. This, um, what was the call last time? Yes, Article 24. Finance moves. Um, we did. Twenty-four was the receiving the articles from the special town meeting. We didn't vote twenty-four. Yeah, we did. Well, that's weird because in in the minutes it says here seventeen through twenty-seven. Ten of them in a row you voted. So I don't know how that would have. I don't. I don't have a vote on. I should run back and get my. Well, I think we should just vote on 24 because it's a no-brainer. It's one of those, do it every year. Yeah. We can, we can reaffirm the uh, comments. All right. Article 24. The seeking of the town will vote to allow select board to apply for, accept, and expand state, federal, and grants. We do not require a town appropriation or town meeting approval or take any other action relative thereto. I make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Aye. 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 Uh, five, uh, when would something like this apply? Like what? Well, reimbursable grants. So we have to front the money, then we get the money paid off from that grant. And there's something that you can do. Well, oh, yeah. disaster relief. Yeah. <laughs> from I mean, one just take the highway disaster relief. Same motion to the board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Article 25, which was Article 27 last week. So we voted we 25 voted. and 26. And I don't know why it's not reflecting. I don't, yeah, that, that's confusing me because I, I know, know you voted. I know you voted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, but I should, I should let you know. And maybe, maybe this is what I did. Oh, the, yeah, they were different 25 and 26. Yeah, they were 27 and 28 last yeah. time. Yeah. So, but the, the date did change. So if you want to reaffirm it, because um, uh, the date of the, the deed has been changed, so Donna had to ask me to change it from November to April in each of those articles, 25 and 26. Mm -hmm. Then we do need to vote it again. Right. Do well, we have to read it? No, don't read it. Please don't read it. Thank you. I'm just going to go over. All right, so Article 25. I, I make a motion that we approve parcels DE1, PUE1, PUE2, and DE1. The date effective, uh, date effective April 2nd this year. You okay, a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 And that is the that that is to purchase, to give for eminent domain or acquire those properties. So they um, same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 26. We make a motion to approve the uh, Purchase of parcels PUE3, PUE4, PUE5, TE3, TE4, 
with this deed dated effective April 2nd, 2024. Anyone care to second? Second. All in favor? Did you offer? I see the motion now. Do you see the motion now? Yeah. Aye. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Same motion for the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So 27 was 29 last week. It looks like the estimates have been updated. Yes, we gave them to me today. So we can vote on six. Is that our? So what, what are we uh, on to next? Article 27, 27. which was 29. Right, but for finance, week. I don't think there's any more for the finance. Yeah, I think we're done. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Vote on CPC. There's no idea. I've never, I, I don't think we had the, look at the last one, but there had been a vote from the select board. Remember you said the select board doesn't make a recommendation on the CPC article. I don't think we have. Yeah, I don't think we have. Yeah. So just. We, they used to, but then a couple of years ago we stopped, and I'm going right, so to the town council's recommendation. No, we don't remember. have Article 2. No, no, no. I'm just so going to pass this. Yeah, so we, have, we, have, we have a question, uh, moderator. <laughs> Uh, Article two should we convene there's a sweep next week. You know, we have to do a, we have a deadline. I mean April 29th, Deerfield's meeting next Monday for the time meeting. We have we're in the 45 day crunch after next Monday. Yeah. Well that's so um, we the have to right? uh, I mean, we that's have to meet You can vote to close the warrant tonight. Yeah. There's because no more articles are coming right. in, right? I mean I think we're so I won't be available Monday, so I would right. appreciate that. <laughs> If we vote to close the warrant tonight. Correct. Yeah. I'm okay, okay with that. But then the question is if you can't, so we'll just have the select Erica and Phil be the quorum for voting on Article 2? Yes. Okay. If you don't mind. I think that's fine. <laughs> okay. So then you vote to close the warrant and you vote on the salaries tonight? That you, the ones that you can? But if that's all for the finance committee, unless, you know. Should we be around not, for discussion about voting on salary? Would you rather it's not? You know, and, and I don't know how you want to deal with the COLA issue either. <laughs> um, so we have to meet again to vote on Article 2. Because you have to represent the numbers, right? The well, board. so I have for you the 5% COLA that you asked for last week. Uh -huh. That's what this is on the yep. back. It's got yeah. the new amount. But that does not include the salary requests, which is why this is such a moving target. Yeah. If it did include the salary request, what would the total numbers be and the total percentage? So, uh, so right now, with 5% total, we're looking at a 2.41% overall increase, is that, am I reading this correctly? Yeah. Um, well, and you said you have to do a, a breakout or a revision of this snow and ice budget? Yeah. That's the total. Oh. The total doesn't change, but the components of it are that? Right. Well, because the, if part of that is also overtime, and there has to yeah. be a discussion about whether or not the overtime is, you know, a lot. So I need to get it broken out for you. So I can right here. Ooh, my goodness, I made that big. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So this was the one I gave you all before with the salary requests and the COLA. And this would be the column you're looking at with the 5%. This is all of the requests of salary increases plus COLA? Plus the 5% COLA. So you can see the general fund, the non-school portion has gone up quite a bit to 4.34%, but the overall, because the schools are giving us kind of a break this year, is still only 2.86, and last year our overall total increase was 3.4 something. Uh, this is really, it's not increasing the 
The only well, the only one that doesn't include is mine, because <laughs> that one hasn't been settled. So it's not going to be. So I have, a, I have a question about process. We can always go back, since special town meetings in December have become a, a more frequent occurrence, is this something we could take up a lot of date? Because I mean, we're running into the 45 day. Uh, we, we don't have a limit on it. We don't have a, no, we're, we're, we're okay with that. Okay. Yeah, the only, the only crunch we have is making sure that Adam and I can get everything to the printer in time yeah. to be mailed to everybody. That's okay. the only crunch we have. That 45 days is actually for the schools, I think, to be getting information. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If it, it has to be like 50. Oh, okay. Three and four percent. You know what? Did I not share that, Roy, so you couldn't see it? I apologize. I was showing yeah. everybody else. <laughs> That's right. I'm the sole remote. Uh, All right. Here. There you go. Sorry, what was your question? I said, well, can't we agree on a number between three and four percent? Is that, is this, I mean, He's talking about wage increases, right? That right well, the COLA, yeah, yeah, but you all asked me last week to do the five, so right. yeah. <laughs> I, I think yeah. it would be helpful so to yeah. pick a number. Did we, did we say five last week? Yeah, yes. we did. Okay. Well, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. So 2.86% is 5% COLA, and all of the requested salary increases but one. Mm -hmm. So even okay. in that with one. With no increase at all for you. Correct. So add in what we previously agreed. I've got the right one, R9. Since Russia just invaded India. <laughs> okay, so, so let me ask a simple question. Hold on, Roy. Hold on. Hold on, Roy. Um, where? Hold on. Uh, right. no, Hold on. <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's say we have, uh, you know, we have applications for abatements, uh, senior citizen abatements, et cetera, et cetera. Is, that, is there a formula for approving that? And which accounts does it come? I mean, is there any accounting for it in the current budget? That is, uh, well, it's based on answer. it's based on the previous year's overlays, right? Yeah. yeah. So it really can it basically can't exceed forty thousand dollars. Oh wait, a where did that go? Sorry, it's hard for me to do it. From there we go. So it goes from two point eight five to two point nine five, or two point eight six to two point nine five. So I, I guess I guess my question is, if, it, if you, <laughs> is it possible that while we expand the the uh, amount raised through taxation, that we wind up reducing the amounts available for abatements? Does that happen? Yeah. The. the the abatements are paid out of the overlays, so... It's not it's, going to be reflected on the budget. Yeah, well, yeah, it's in the recap, but it's not in... Okay, well, I, I'm not sure I understand the process. I mean, I know, I know what the overlay is, but I, that's, that's all. My, my, uh, I think we talked about this one of the other meetings. If you increase the taxation, you can uh, increase abatements to kind of compensate people. You know, uh, you know, it's always convoluted. Well, the well, the overlays uh, thirty range from thirty-five thousand to forty thousand dollars. Yeah, right. But so, where's the overlay coming from? Well, the overlay is based on you know, is it, is it what people borrow from the prior years from the prior year, boy. Is, That's it, the is, is there an overlay line in the assessment budget? No, it, it's in the. Hang on a second. Let me get back to it again. I think it's forty-five thousand. Forty-five. Yeah. Oh, boys, it can, it can never exceed yeah. forty-five. It can't exceed forty-five. Even that's a max. It's not as immaterial. Okay. So there's the overlay. So we mm -hmm. have. So this is part of what we have to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so like up here, this is all of our general fund, the schools, Frontier, Franklin mm -hmm. County, you know. Okay, but going back to salaries and the overall salaries in the COLA, like, I mean, the, when you made that adjustment, the difference is between 2.86 and 2.95%, which is still under 3%, so it's a less of an increase than we had last year. Mm -hmm. It's still a moving target because you still have to vote the salaries, right. but yeah. if I could get if I could at least get the COLA set so I don't have to keep switching, yeah, so yeah. that would be no, a I huge help to yeah, me. But we, but yeah, we, <laughs> and but then, it depends what the, what, when you add the salaries in what that number is, though. But that's, so, what, that's what I'm showing. That's what she just yeah, so then, yeah. so then category L. But we, I guess... Both, vote, I, it, vote, the line, vote the line of category L. Well, you can't well, because you can't do that until you vote the salary. Well, can, but can we... But we, but we, we don't know... Even, but... but but the highway, the snow and ice one is in there too, which hasn't been sorted out yet. Oh, okay. So if you were to say, uh, this is it, yeah, then it's still can. gonna change. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you can so, just yeah. give me the yeah. COLA percentage and vote the salaries you can, then we'll get back to, you know. All right. Um, and if we absolutely have to, we could have the final, final vote on Article 2, May, what is it, uh, 6th, I think. Yeah, that'd be pushing up, but yeah. We looked at it today, and yeah, because May eighth is the printer; it goes to the printer. It takes them four or five days to do the annual report and the warrant, and the fifteenth would be the day it has to be. It's just car driving around. If, the if, I mean, yeah, we could have what we what do we need forty eight hours notice for like a last minute. If, if we were to have like another meeting just to vote on this one item, yeah, yeah, that all yeah, set. We, could, we just need 48 hours, so we could definitely get this done before. Even if Chris isn't here on Monday, well, he's not here all week. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, yeah. So the soonest you could vote on this would be probably the May would be May 6th. So that would be that's too tight for you guys, though. Or, I mean, you said it's good. No, uh, yeah, I get it to him the second. Last year it took him four or five days. And like I say, the 15th would be the day he's in his car driving around. Because so last year it didn't get there. Last year was the year that people didn't get it in the mail. Yeah. Or that they didn't. It, was, it was close, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So last year, that's not a good example. It didn't work last year. Well, it, I, did, it didn't. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I don't have salaries voted. I don't have a COLA. I, I can't give you a final number what? until I do. And, and why can't we agree on the COLA now? Because we don't have the final salary number? Is that, that what I mean, right? No, we still can't vote on our... We can finalize COLA. I mean, yeah. we, could, we could agree that we're moving forward 5%, but we still can't vote Article 2. We just don't have the final numbers for uh, Article 2. Okay. Can we have the number for next week? I'm sorry? Can we have the number for next week? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do it next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, as long as I know tonight yeah. what the cola and the salary amounts are. Otherwise, I can't put yeah. it together for you. I hope maybe because on May 6th, I won't be able. I will prefer May 7th. Otherwise, before will be good. There's nothing for us to vote on at this point, right? No. Okay. So, so, can we excuse from the dinner table? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you I'm, have Did you have a formal recommendation for the cola? Or does well, the select board want one? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I, thought, I thought we kind of agreed on that. Okay, so you want the finance committee to make a recommendation on the cola. This is for hourly employees. It does not cover salaried employees. Well, no, no, it covers, it covers everybody. Yeah. It covers all non-contractual non-contractual who, who are not receiving a pay increase. Yes. Who are not receiving a pay increase. Mm -hmm. Right? Who are not getting a, a, a both salary right. or, or hourly rate. If, if the COLA is more, they get that. Right. Okay. If right. the salary increase is more, they get that. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
But it's for the young and now we're the age of. All right. Yeah, but there's only a handful of people in the southwest side that are not going to try to All right. So. You can make a motion. I make a motion to a 5% coal increase. Any further discussion? Questions? No. no. Anyone second? second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. <laughs> what is that saying? What I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's 4 0 in favor of your abstention. 4 0. With one abstention. I mean, uh, to, to, to me, I would make the same motion, except it would be contingent on the fact that. Uh, the total overall number cannot exceed 3%. Even the last year was 3.4? Yeah. And we have a huge levy limit, like 800,000. That's, that's my, that, that would be my most, that that's a really significant goal, whether you agree or not. I'm just afraid of limiting it. I'm, I'm, I'm a fear that that's going to get you into a conundrum next week, potentially. But then, then we take. Then it's worth taking a look at again. But that's and that's the problem with voting numbers that yeah. you don't know the effect of those of that vote. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, well, how how much change do we anticipate? We've got 99.8 percent of the numbers yeah. in, in the budget, and the cola we saw is. Forty-five hundred dollars for every one percent cola increase. Minimums. I think over five thousand. I mean, we're we're talking a minimum swing, unless you change the, the underlying budget numbers significantly in the next week. Well, then let's make cola four percent to have more of a. Well, I mean, I'm in agreement with Phil. We have to be fiscally responsible, and three percent. Or under should be the goal. This should be the goal every annu annual, every year. Where, where, where are you getting, where, where's the 3% coming from? Well, the last year's what's, budget what's increase. Right? Total, in, suppose, total increase, Roy. that number wound up 3.05%. Is that you're going to knock the goal back down? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't increase. just have continuous moving targets. You can't. You, you, you have a target and I mean, you know, last year, last year was fiscally a, a rough year. The employees got what two and a half percent colas, right? I mean, no, it wasn't two and a half. It three, was two. two, two. Yeah, I mean, and it was three point three nine um, right. percent over the year before. Yeah. And so it's a good year. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to take devil's advocate. It's a good. You year. Already so okay. You already said that. You already said that. I'm, I'm, conf I'm confused, but I, I'll go along with. I mean, when are those numbers going to be the salary numbers going to be finalized? Okay, does that happen before the town meeting, or or it, it doesn't even because the town meeting things can change. They have to be finished so that we, we can print Article 2. Yeah. yeah. We have to be able to vote on some, some, some fixed, concrete. finalized number, right? Whether it gets well, so, I know, I, I get it, but so if this is a problem, can't, can you just put in salaries as they are, and then you vote se a separate article? On, I mean, I know it's not, politically, it's not that great to do that, but you could put the COLA to the town meeting as well. I don't think that's similar. Yeah. No. But I, I mean, you, you put in what's close to those final salary numbers, right? As best I can. And yeah. so even with that, in a 5% COLA, we were still at 2.95%. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, like yeah, it's still a moving target, but, you know, like John said, we're very, very It's close. not going to move by more than like 0.1 or 2%. Right. It's not going to go up to... I, I hope... <laughs> Well, where where so, are you fearing the big number changes that could potentially come from? I, I just, well, because we haven't voted on the salaries and the snow and ice hasn't been broken out, I just, 
you know, it would be nice to have those finalized so that I could know what number to actually put in there to reflect. But it's as close as I can get it yeah. without having the final numbers. But we just looked at it with yep. the proposed salaries. Correct. Well, most and, of them. Yeah. Did we not? Most. Isn't that what yeah. the spreadsheet that we yeah. were just looking at? It, yes. Yes. Okay. And it was under 3%. Yes. 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 With a 5% call. Right? Yes. That's why I said 5% COLA contingent upon it staying under 3%. That's mm -hmm. that's why, that's... So everybody should be happy. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought, but okay. I mean, it didn't, it didn't so seem you, that way. It's, 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 the it's, overall it's, snow and ice figure might go higher. You an argument for working it backwards. In other words, make the call whatever it takes to be just under 3%. Yeah, that's what Bill's kind of, saying. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Salt for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what spreadsheets are for. Oh, so I have a question, uh, Rooney. With the uh, snow and ice budget, is the overall numbers going to stay the same or could possibly change? No, that, that's a huge change that could happen because that one included both overtime for um, the regular staff, overtime for the super after a certain number of hours. Um, what? That's, that's why I wanted you all to look at these requests and vote on them. And that one I have to break out. But that was made clear when we went through 423, the snow and ice. So, you know, and none of this See, has been voted on. This is why it's we're so- We're contradicting our own town's legal advice. I was given requests. I put them forward to the board. I've been doing yeah. that for. You can't put forward an illegal request. No, no. Hold on. Hold on. I don't think I, this has this been proposed to the board for a while. I mean, yeah. this came through the personnel committee. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we made a recommend, recommendation to the select board. Um, well, we actually made no official recommendation on that particular right. point, right. but we did have a conversation about our feelings about the overtime portion. And so this has been sort of in front of the select board for a while to make a decision I, on. I thought it was resolved that we were going to accept the fact that our attorney told us not to do something illegal and we weren't going to do something illegal. That, like, I didn't understand that it's still on the table somehow to do something illegal. No, no, so, there's not been no recommendation to do anything else. Um, paying an exempt employee overtime is illegal. Period. That would be consistent with the personnel committee's yes. recommendation. Okay. It's good to put the committee on the side of the law. <laughs> That's probably We'll see. I might have to uh, shut it down and restart really quickly, Roy. We'll see. <laughs> what are we waiting on for now? A date to come by? Yeah. Just a chat message. Oh. Okay. Is that that was from earlier. Yes. Okay, so... Um, I will, well, that's what I have to get the specific numbers from Ron. That's why I couldn't get that done today. But I will get that, take it out. If that is, yeah, I will get that taken out. Is it possible for the last year to date this year and for, uh, since the, most of the winter season is behind us, from Mike Cicello, what the uh, year to date expenditures have been on overtime, is it maybe the last three years, what the overtime aid has been, the breakouts between the superintendent and the uh, well, there's the never been overtime for the superintendent. Never. No. And this year's proposal is, is, might reflect the superintendent getting overtime. Is that? It that was, was built into the snow. It was ice built budget. into the yeah. A certain number of hours of overtime. So you're you're going to get the breakout of the overtime paid to the superintendent. I'm going to get everything split out so right. that I can yes. This, this I, I look. I have to say I understand Phil's caution here. We got to be very careful. I can tell you that I did place a call to the um, 
Employment Association, New England, who actually contradicted and said that you can pay overtime. That I'm, I'm just that is so inappropriate. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that's stating, just, Phil. I'm not that's stating. That's just so inappropriate. I'm not Come stating on. that it should. How many be. calls do we have to have with our lawyer? How many times do we have to do this? You keep on kind of trying to go around I'm the lawyer. I'm not trying to go around anything, and I'm not making any recommendations no, whatsoever. No. It was about whether or not it's illegal. That was my only point. Isn't it just a matter of finding the proper way to compensate a particular individual? That's what we're talking about here. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. So if one method is not legal, you've got to find another way. I think by any fair definition of that word, we have done that for the next fiscal year. Yeah. Between the $20,000 bonus that we just paid him, between the increase that we're that he requested that we're prepared to vote on um, okay. and uh, I mean this is mm -hmm. just don't you know at, at some point when our lawyer says something like five times it has to just be the final you, you just have to be willing to say to someone this is it like yeah. this yeah. is it yeah which is fine. I mean, like, I don't. I don't think that's that's an issue. I mean, it's very clear. I mean, the personnel committee is 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 very clear. The three, of, you know, you have a quorum here, uh, but I can speak for yeah, that everybody on the personnel committee feels the same way. Uh, it's it's not a good precedent to set for the town, um, whether it's illegal or not. I mean, we know that some towns do it, and we disagree with it for a, a host of reasons. And um, I think the issue in front of the select board would be. The rest of the compensation request for the superintendent, which was made, and whether where where you guys are on that. I I, I personally favor that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you have a. You just have to tease out the uh, overtime. Yeah. Exactly, but that's why I had this list in front of you for tonight to, so that I I know what the select board wishes right. me to put in to the spreadsheet. So we've got some more clarity on that. And I, you know, I'm actually in agreement with the personnel committee yeah. and with you on this. Yeah. I was merely oh, making yeah, a point. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's not bring up OT again. I I said it from day one, even before we talked yeah. to the lawyer. I already yeah. know the answer to it. Yeah. yeah exempt is there. It's in the in the. It's exempt. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the definition it's is like right stop there. Stop and go. So it should not be a stop discussion. It should stop like. Stop. Yeah. But it gets it gets complicated when trying to take the highway department and turn it into an excavating contractor <laughs> and start doing all these jobs around town to oh. save the money. And it's like the highway department's not. An excavating contractor to, to maintain the roads. So when we get to overtime, it'll be about that's moving a great, snow around. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, not for not yeah, for digging up, making an addition here, doing something yeah. to dump something up in a pickleball place, you know, whatever. <laughs> and that doesn't take. And that doesn't it is take. not an excavation contractor. But the flip side of that, though, is that each of those side jobs included additional compensation. Yes. Within those jobs not on not reflected directly in the salary line item right. but within yeah. the cost of each of those projects okay. so um, so yes no overtime but yes more compensation yeah that's or, uh, or no you, the higher it out the highway department's not and a contractor. Well, the thing is that the equipment is all here, and the hiring out. And the equipment the, is. The, the hiring out when then you bringing in equipment that you all, which dramatically increases the cost of the job. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, you yeah, have yeah, that yeah, same yeah, yeah. equipment sitting in your yard that the town owns, yeah. that's that's the real. If it's outside the purview of the job duties, then you can have a different style of merit for that, whether that be a bonus or something other than that. Yeah. If you have a job, let's use a restaurant for an example. Yeah. I am a manager of a restaurant, right? I'm a salaried employee, but it's busy. I'm waiting tables. I don't go to hourly. You can take the tips. You can take tips, but you do not go to hourly. 
right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 right. Yeah. So the same pool. goes for yeah. any other job. So if you're a superintendent and you have to be on the road doing work that your hourly employees do, you're still paid as a superintendent, yeah. whether you're performing the function or not. Yeah. So. But what I'm getting at is some of this OT is about projects beyond so the traditional not, yeah, scope. That, we're, yeah. we're not calling that OT's off the table. We're just not, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not, not, that's not OT. That's enough for me. <laughs> so, when should we meet again? <laughs> that's that's a sign, we got it? next Monday, right? 29th. Yeah, 29th. Yep. You want to make a motion? Oh, no, hold up. We have to get to when we decide. It's on 29th at 6.30. We just place it in Article 2. And that's it. Okay, you're not going to be here? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, we can make the finance committee meet with the select board, and the select board can always meet and go out in a separate time. Well, 29th, 6 30. 6 30. I'll hold here for Okay. Do you hear that, Roy? We're going to be meeting Monday of next week, April 29th, 6 30, yeah. Town Hall. 6 30. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All. See you Monday of next week, 6 30. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You get paid overtime. You getting paid for doing this? That's what I was called in for. That's what I was called in for. Zero is zero. zero. Exactly. Right. So we got a couple we got a couple more. Um good. So. The discussion of the emergency <laughs> select board meeting of yesterday. Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Are you are you voting on the salary request tonight for me so that I know what to put in? Are you saying that they're yes. all good? I, I don't. Yeah, I thought we said that. Yeah. Just so we officially vote. <laughs> I, mean, you're talking I, I just I just need to know <laughs> that, yes, that we're good. That those are good. Okay. That, that line, in, including yours, from what we had agreed on. No. <laughs> <laughs> So the salaries that are presented to us, um, maybe there's not a total to it. Um, there was on the spreadsheet that was usable. Well, some okay. of these are, the, 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 well, the, like some of these are an hourly increase, but then we're taking out the- 423. We're taking out 423. Right? This was presenting to you what the request was mm -hmm. for how much the current salary was, and then I also gave you the current pay rates, which Jan has put together for us, and it has the last three years, so you can see what those are. I just need to know if the board approves those increases, except for snow and ice. Yeah. This doesn't have police chief or town admin on this one here, right? Correct. Okay. But we should probably vote on this as well, right? Or You've already done well, one. Right. We, yeah, we've done. Okay, so it's just. We need, one. we need a number to put in for the other. on and then if something more comes up when we have a meeting or whatever then something more comes up but in the meantime we need to agree it we need to put a number in right but I thought we'd agreed on a <laughs> do, we, do we all agree on what that same number is I mean I thought we did but we had a meeting where we agreed on a number I don't I don't um,
we haven't been able to schedule another meeting. But so for, for these purposes, we need to put a number in. That's the, that's the number that we have to work with. Is Jeff still the transfer station manager? No. Okay. Yeah, some of those names have changed. Okay. So we were two hundred. It was we were two hundred fifty dollars off. I thought we agreed that we were. We agreed that the two hundred fifty dollar um, thing was you probably was silly. should not be discussing sorry. contractual sorry. negotiations. Sorry. But sorry. We we but we ended up agreeing on a number. Mm -hmm. It was like the first thing that we discussed, but um. Well, um, we have to be able to schedule a meeting. I have no issues with anything shown here outside of, like we said, 423. I'm prepared to vote on the others. So uh, I'll make a motion to um, approve the fiscal year 2024 pay rates, excluding account 423, as shown in the salary and stipend um, sheet. Well, these are the 20, but it's the 25 <laughs> rates that we've Right? Isn't it like this is the limit for this is last year's? This is last year's. I apologize. So we're looking at this. this one. Yeah. Right. All right. I'll Speaking make a motion <laughs> to uh, approve the listed fiscal year 2025 pay rates with the exclusion of account 423. Well, just the part, just the last part, just the OT part. Correct. That's so moved. Yeah, yeah. So I can bring it back to you and say what it is without right. that. Correct. Yep. Um, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. salary and cola or do we need something else to, do we need to decide something else okay um we on to the disc emergency select board discuss yes. yes well i mean Eric i guess i i mean my concern is that we still feel like we still have a contract that's in negotiation so i think we really need to continue to negotiate that contract we have to have a meeting scheduled. It has to be an executive session. Right, yes. Yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm asking if we can schedule another executive session so that we can. I can do one over Zoom. I could too. Once the earliest you can do an executive session. Is there a time? Today it would be for Friday. Friday then. If that's um, available. Or we mean this Friday? Yeah, okay. it has to be 48 hours posted, and that can't be, that that makes it Friday. I mean, I think we kind of have to, because <laughs> we still have an outstanding contract. What time? Later, if possible, oh. I have to go to Boston and drop my wife off at and pick her up from my hospital. Mm.
So anything after, say, 4 p.m. I'll be there at the hospital at 7 a.m. I'm hoping to be gone by the You better give yourself an extra yeah. 5 o'clock or 6 or 5 6. You can't. We're leaving right from there, so it's a two-hour drive. It, I, 4 p.m. should be fine. 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. I'm, I'm going to be flexible, whatever works for everybody. All right. So five? Yeah. That's what I meant for tonight. For tonight's purposes only. Okay. Um, discussion of the emergency select board meeting from yesterday, which was the sale of deeds for the sale of a plot, a deed representing a burial plot in the South Park Cemetery that had to be done on an emergent basis for reasons that were discussed. Um, at the meeting that were painfully apparent to everybody, um, especially myself. Um, uh, that that was a sale for three hundred dollars of one plot. Um, he did pay by check. We have to sign this. There are. I think it's just two copies. Two copies? Yeah. If you could please sign. Uh, yeah, I just going to say, please sign both, and then I just signed one and passed it on. Um, do we have a chapel A road, or is that supposed to be chapel? It's chapel. Am I right? It's chapel. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a last minute addition. It could be chapel. <laughs> I, um, I can honestly say it still seemed really, really, really <laughs> deep. It still believe. seemed really hard. Uh, so it was, but got made, made the, made the maximum depth. Made it. Yeah, but that thing, oh, somebody called from Asheville this morning, and they're having a charity bike a thon on Saturday. So the, yeah, so they'll okay. be coming through, and it's for you know disabled. This is what the disabled people the charity is for, and she just asked. You know, they've already scoped out a spot up there in North Pole and that a little porta potty for the day would fit perfectly and not be in the way. So I guess she forgot to ask. Or <laughs> well, just occurred to her this morning to ask that question. And there's no, there's no insurance issue. There's no liability issues with the porta potty. Not, not that I'm aware of. But that's what these were from. Yeah. Just to give you all the roots so that you knew. Yeah. And so when you go. came in today, I said, "Yeah, it is kind of a little, a little late. You might want to get." He's in a little sooner to give request permission, but. Um, is it where the parking spot is? At the chapel front. At the chapel one, you can go the back way. It could be yeah. in that area. Mm -hmm. Somebody just bought that big white house right there. Oh no way! They're gonna be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> well, it won't be permanent. All right, I move that we approve the placing of the porta potty on Chapel Falls Road with Saturday's charity bike ride. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, um, <coughs> Town Ad Benefit Credit. Okay, Anything you want to add to your town administration for the No. No, um, well, you all discussed the festival of hills already. Yeah, that was a big part of the update. Um, so our next meeting is an executive session for the purposes of contract negotiation this Friday, which is the twenty sixth. 
Sorry, you did mail already, right? on the mail on the initial email that was states the select board on it I never received from April 12th so well some of them may say to the select board but they're sent to me which is why they got it get, yeah um, it would have made more sense if you would have had um, my response to the one oh, letter. Oh, it's not in here. No. Yes, it is. Uh, it's on the back. I yeah, think. it is. Oh. Yes, it is. That. Right. That's why it said assorted because yeah. there okay. were there were several. Um, I don't, does anybody have any anything they want to say about any of these? Uh, um, not that I've 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 already stated. I did email back one of the people on here and stated. The same thing that the entire town had issues. We had to start somewhere. We had st said in the meeting before, I think I even used the term, there's a gaping wound. You need to plug the biggest one first. We know that the area we're having um, all of the um, um, assessment done at is the most congregated area of the most affected homes. So that was the choice with it. I totally appreciate people writing in, but one of the, um, it, it, some, some of the advice on there is not, how do I put this? You can't just divvy up money equally across the board for all town residents. It doesn't work that way. Some residents didn't have any issues with the flood. Some residents had major issues with the flood. We have to concentrate on um, the, the areas of most concern. Um, so we're relying on uh, our citizens to go online and fill out the um, link, the form that has been linked on the main page or any put on the main page. It's been up there for what, a couple months now? Easily. Um, to please do that. I've only seen one response from that so far, I believe. Um, <coughs> or actually, it wasn't from the link. You had sent another response from somebody else who had written in about their um, flood situation. Mm -hmm. I think there's some confusion about that link, people because we sent out links for the survey, the groundwater survey for UMass. And I think there's confusion about um, thinking that that also went to the town and that those were one and the same thing. But it's not it's different. The groundwater survey is just on the news on the website. I think some people think that the, the money we receive from the state is going to be used for private residences, which it's not, right? And Correct. Some people believe that it, there should be an equal distribution of that money to our townspeople, but that again is not accurate. It's not being used on private property, and the distribution of the flood rains was not equal for town residents either. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, by all means, write in, tell us your thoughts, your concerns, but you know. <laughs> we're relying on experts, we're relying on data, we're relying on our, our super from the highway, and um, I, I think we've made very good decisions. I, I, I mean, for me, the issue is that the initial uh, correspondence that prompted this has to do with a large solar array that is on private property. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we are extremely limited. <laughs> but we totally understand and have heard the frustrations of residents in that neighborhood. But it is it is private property. So we don't really have any recourse to tell a private homeowner, you know, what kind of arrangement they can enter into with the private company or what happens on their land. 
um, and we can't really <laughs> we can't really intercede on behalf of other residents who have issues with that private property. And it's it's frustrating and it's unfortunate, but it is it's a it's a choice that a private homeowner made. And uh, to the extent the concerns are addressed about Nexam at this point to the select board, those concerns really should be addressed to the planning board um, because they have enforcement authority over zoning bylaws. Um, and the select board does not. So with regard to Nexam, once the initial contract was signed with Nexam and the agreement with Nexam was finalized, the role of the select board in Nexam ended statutorily, legally. Um, well, you know, we pass on concerns. I just wrote to Nexam um, when I received the most recent update with some questions, but um, trying trying to advocate for the concerns of our residents. But the um, yeah. um, that's other than that. Yep, that's all I had to say. On yeah, me too. But you guys. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So next meeting. Um, Friday, the 26th, executive <coughs> session at 5 o'clock. Next public meeting, April 29th, Monday, here at 6 p.m. Are we okay? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.